Hey Nilo, great work on submitting your first batch of essays. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through both of them and give you some personalised feedback on this so that you know what to improve for the next time. Okay, so some people think that schools have to be more entertaining while others think that their sole purpose is to educate. Which do you agree with? Use specific reasons and examples to support your opinion is your first question. Okay. And for your introduction, you've got, over the past few decades, there have been some concerns in modern society regarding regarding media-rich and entertaining education provided at school. I strongly believe that formal training should be more fascinating in this media-dominated world. In this essay, I shall scrutinise the importance of education being entertaining, using examples from Harvard and the Canadian government to demonstrate points and support arguments. Okay, good. So, a strong introduction there is good. Um, you've got some really nice vocabulary and phrases as well, which is good. Um, let's just go through again. So, over the past few decades, <laughs> uh, there have been some concerns um, in modern society regarding media-rich and entertaining education provided at school, or I'd say provided in schools here. Um, mm -hmm, okay, I strongly believe that formal training should be more more fascinating. Now, fascinating is an extreme adjective, um, and it's not normally one that we would use in this context, so we would probably say more engaging or more entertaining in this media-dominated world. In this essay, I, uh, so scrutinise is normally quite negative, whereas um, you have said that you believe in um, training being more engaging. So I would say I will analyse the importance of education being entertaining using examples from Harvard and the Canadian government. Okay, but yeah, really well done, a strong opening there. Uh, to begin with, educational institutions have to use greater technology in order to coach, uh, in order to make the learning experience more gratifying. So, um, instead of to begin with, I would say firstly, okay, so firstly then, educational institutions have to use greater technology in order to make the learning experience more gratifying. This is because there has been a reduction in the cost of media goods and this has impacted the growth of media. For example, a study conducted by Harvard showed that 40% of middle-aged students are visual learners. Seen in this light, it is clear that schools have to incorporate more screen entertaining devices. Okay, um, now, we'll just go back to here. Okay, I see where you're going with this. I think it might just need a little bit more explanation to make it clear. Okay, um, by saying something like, nowadays devices are cheaper and so um, use of uh, multimedia or use of media has grown extensively. Um, Uh, and then something like, as such, uh, students are used to using devices in their studies. For example, a study conducted by Harvard showed that 40% of middle-aged students are visual learners. Okay, so seen in this light, it is clear that schools have to incorporate more... Um, I would say instead of screen entertaining, um, it is clear that schools have to incorporate more um, technology-focused and engaging devices, uh, engaging um, methods there, okay? Um, so you're trying to say that uh, the world has become more media-focused, so it makes sense to incorporate this in the classroom. Okay, these are all really good points and it's a well-structured paragraph, but I would say that this sentence is a little bit too vague, it just needs a little bit more explanation. It's as if you've given one point and then jumped straight to your example without explaining that point 
clearly. So how does the reduction in the cost of media and the growth of media change the way we learn in schools? Okay, so it could be that you're saying that um, using different medias is cheaper now and more people are used to it. So there's no excuse not to incorporate that technology into the classroom. Okay, um, but yeah, good. Uh, secondly, since kids are surrounded by technology, they should learn how to use. Uh, they should learn how to use it because it's technology. It properly in an academic environment. This is due to the fact that they will probably enhance their cognitive skills and receive better grades. Take for instance. So take comma for instance comma a recent research, a recent study from the Canadian government, which indicates that American children own, on average, five to nine media-rich devices in their bedroom. As a consequence, it is undeniable that uh, students okay, have to perceive larger formal recreational services at school using what they already have at home. Okay, now this is a good paragraph again, but I would say that you slightly missed the point on entertainment. So um, this is more about um, the device used for learning rather than the nature of the learning itself. So you're talking about um, using devices, which is great, and using technology, but we need to incorporate that entertaining side of things as well. So at the moment we're just talking about technology, whereas we need to say um, that a lot of students already have this technology, so it makes sense to use that technology to make lessons more entertaining and teach them how to use the technology well in an academic environment. Okay, so you're just slightly missing the points with that paragraph, so I would go back and have another look at that one. Um, as a whole, uh, from the eloquent evidence and clinching arguments given, okay, uh, interesting use of adjectives here. Um, I would stick with from the evidence and arguments given. Okay, um, I strongly agree that schools have to include entertainment and not just some dull education. Okay, in the future it is predicted that old-fashioned ways of teaching will decline. Okay, so interesting points there. Um, I see what you mean here by entertainment and how different devices can be entertainment. The question here is some people think that schools have to be more entertaining. So it's not just that we're incorporating different entertainment devices but actually making the activities more entertaining in themselves more engaging more um uh kind of more exciting than they are at the moment so i would go back through slightly and to have a look at um how you can show those points that you've made which are good to support schools being entertaining rather than just educational okay so this is about lessons being um different in the sense of being more fun really okay so some good points but i would say just go back and see how you can change those points slightly or manipulate those points so that they are talking about um, the method of teaching being more entertaining than it is at the moment. Okay, um, let's have a look at your second one. Doing an enjoyable activity with a child can develop better skills and more creativity than reading. To what extent do you agree? Use reasons and specific examples to explain your answer. Okay, uh, recently there have been some concerns regarding doing entertaining activities with children over reading for polishing skills. Okay. Uh, I believe that creativity could be enhanced while performing fascinating tasks. This essay will scrutinise this idea using examples from the International Children Foundation and the Canadian government to demonstrate points. Okay. So, recently there have been some concerns regarding... Um, okay. So, rather... Uh, 
sorry, regarding doing entertaining activities with children rather than encouraging reading, for example. I believe that creativity um, is more enhanced by... Again, this use of fascinating is an extreme adjective, so we need to use something like um, enjoyable tasks. Okay. Um, this essay will scrutinise, again, a negative word there. So this essay will discuss this idea. This essay will explore this idea. Okay. Using examples from the International Children's Foundation and the Canadian government to demonstrate points. Okay. To begin with, playing video games outweighs reading when trying to develop active skills. So outweighs with an S there. This is because most kids enjoy playing consoles in their leisure time. Um, so playing on consoles in their leisure time. And there is not a better alternative to level up creativity than performing something gratifying. For example, a study conducted by the International Children's Foundation showed that 70% of youngsters who owned a PlayStation, no, um, no commas there, okay, uh, were more likely to develop a new skill when playing games. Therefore, carrying out a joyful task will increase some skills, such as spatial awareness. Um, so, carrying out an joyful task, um, I would say instead a creative task, or carrying out a creative task, will increase skills, not some skills, will increase skills or develop skills such as spatial awareness. Okay. Secondly, sports competitions are outstanding for infants. So outstanding again is an extreme adjective. Okay, so sports competitions are um Uh, sports competitions are fun for infants, or sports competitions are enjoyable for infants, are um, engaging for infants, and they acquire an absolute inspiration to learn when playing in teams. Okay, this part is not very clear. Okay, so they... they... Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by this sentence. So, and they acquire an absolute inspiration to learn. Um, and they encourage learning when playing in teams, for example. This is due to the fact that they, that the players have to use their cognitive abilities and coordination. For instance, a recent research from the Canadian government indicates that physical abilities of children could not be developed without proper physical activities. Consequently, it is undeniable that doing a cheerful task, so an active task, helps youngsters to obtain skills that were impossible by just reading. Good. Okay, so I was just thinking that we needed to mention reading, so that is good. So impossible by just reading. What I would do is also to mention reading at the end of this paragraph, just to show the examiner that that is the question that is in your mind throughout the whole essay. So, um, so therefore carrying out a, um, an enjoyable task will increase some skills, such as spatial awareness, which cannot be acquired from reading alone, for example. Uh, okay, as a whole, um, I would say here, be careful with your use of as a whole, because we need to use something like in summary or in conclusion there. From the eloquent evidence given, again, be careful with this use of adjective, because it... Um, we wouldn't normally use uh, a word like eloquent here. We could say from the relevant evidence given or from the strong evidence given. I staunchly agree that skills and creativity are better developed with perf by performing fun activities or um, enjoyable activities rather than reading. Now, staunchly, again, slightly odd um, adverb here. I would say probably strongly agree. 
Okay. Um, in the future, it is predicted that video games will incorporate reading stories, so there will be further advantages to these activities. Okay. All right. Well done. Good. So, um, to recap, be careful of some of your adjectives towards the end of your essay, such as eloquent evidence and clinching arguments, just because these sound um, a little bit out of place. Uh, this would be more if you were giving an opinion on something that you'd read. So um, the article uses eloquent evidence and clinching arguments, but you wouldn't use this about your own writing at the end. As well with essay writing and um, ones like this, we have to be unbiased. Okay, so being factual at all times there. Okay, um, as well as that, the key parts in your first essay, not in your second one as much, but in the first one, is making sure that those points are linked to the question and that you haven't gone um, away from the question too far. Okay, but uh, brilliant first essays, really well done, and clearly a lot of work has gone into these. Brilliant.